Kaleidoscope, a weekly public affairs program brought to you in partnership with the Urban League of Greater Cleveland, Kaleidoscope Magazine, and News Channel 5. Good morning, everyone, and welcome to the broadcast. Earlier this year, some changes were made to the Family Medical Leave Act to make it more inclusive. Susan Keating Anderson is an attorney with Walter and Haverfield Law Firm and will explain what this change means to companies and employees. Then the executive director of the East End Neighborhood House, Paul Hill, will tell us about the Rites of Passage program. Later in the broadcast, Wanda Davis and Todd Adams of the Ashbury Senior Computer Community Center will explain what it is doing to train individuals for new jobs. Good morning again. I'm Leon Bibb, and this is Kaleidoscope. And so we begin with Susan Anderson, an attorney with Walter and Haverfield Law Firm. Good to have you with us, Susan. Thank you, Leon. Great yeah. to be here. Yeah. You're going to talk a little bit about the Family Medical Leave Act. First off, we need to set the stage. What is the Family Medical Leave Act? Well, the Family <laughs> Medical Leave Act is uh, a framework of, of laws and regulations that were put into effect in 1993. It's commonly referred as FMLA, and mm -hmm. that may be the way your viewers mm -hmm. are familiar with it. And what, what the FMLA uh, framework does is it entitles eligible employees to 12 weeks of unpaid job protected leave for a, a variety of family and medical reasons. Mm -hmm. um, namely, an employee is entitled to leave from their workplace to care for a child that has a serious health condition or to care for a parent or spouse with a serious health condition. Uh, an employee is also entitled to leave for the serious health condition of their own yeah. that they need treatment for. Um, and as well as an employee is entitled to leave when a, for a birth of a child or placement of a child through the foster or adoption process. Yeah. Now something has changed in all of this now. Right. There's actually been a lot of changes to FMLA um, over the last few years, but most recently in June, the Department of Labor, which I'll probably refer to as the DOL, issued uh, what's called an interpretation of FMLA regulations. Now the regulations themselves have not changed, but the DOL's interpretation of regulations have changed, and what this interpretation has done is to open up certain certain classes of leave to a broader group of employees. More people. More, More people. More people can be involved. Yeah. More mm -hmm. employees mm -hmm. are entitled to leave. Mm -hmm. So what should people do now to, to get more information on this? I mean, they can go to, if they're with their company, they can go certainly to their human resources individual in their building. Absolutely. Now, because this this interpretation was just issued in June, mm -hmm. you know, I, I, I do mainly work for employers. And mm -hmm. so I'm getting a lot of calls from my mm -hmm. employer clients saying, what does this mean for us? So, you know, employers are in the process of reviewing their policies and making sure that they're up to speed with this interpretation. Interpretation. So employees should certainly open a dialogue with their employers to determine what their eligibility is. But, you know, you have to keep in mind that this is a very fluid law. Yeah. And so, you know, employers and employees alike are, are getting up to speed on it. Give us an example. A lot, a lot of people may be in the dark about mm -hmm. FMLA, Family mm -hmm. Medical Leave Act. Mm -hmm. uh, give us kind of a just a thumbnail sketch uh, uh, of something that where a person might need to have FMLA time okay. away from work. Okay. Well, particular to this to this Department of Labor interpretation what the interpretation has said is that in the past um, employees were eligible for leave if they were a parent of a child with a serious health condition or if they ha gave birth to a child or had a child that was placed in their home through foster or adoption care what the, this interpretation has done is really expanded the definition of parent to someone who is considered to be in loco parentis to a child meaning you need to have no legal or biological relationship with the child. It is enough that you have either day-to-day -day, uh, responsibility for the care of the child or responsibility for the financial support of the child. You could be a, what I call, you could be a psychological parent. You, you're, in, you're in the house with, with, the, with the youngster and that you may not have a blood tie with that youngster, but that youngster sees you as mom or dad. Absolutely, and that's not all that different from what the regs have always said, but mm -hmm. what's different now is that before you had to be able to prove, if you were not the biological parent of a child or you know the adoptive parent, before you had to prove that you had both 
day-to-day uh, -day responsibility for the care of the child mm -hmm. and financial responsibility for the child. Yeah. What this the Department of Labor interpretation says is that it's an either-or proposition. You either have to have day-to-day -day yeah. responsibility to care for the child or financial support. And that's where it opens it up to um, people such as significant others. Um, so say you are the boyfriend of a, of a mother. Mm -hmm. That boyfriend now, a living boyfriend, if, if he has day-to-day -day responsibility mm -hmm. for the child, he would now be eligible for FMLA leave. Yeah. And, um, you know, what's getting a lot of press currently is that the DOL specifically says that this pertains to same-sex couples. Yes. What's how Walter and Haverfield, how was it working with all of this, you, the law firm for which you work? Mm -hmm. Well, basically, you know, what I do is I counsel employers on day-to-day -day employment practices, and then if, you know, for whatever reason that employer doesn't call me first or, or calls me and, and disregards my advice and then they get into trouble uh, because they don't follow the law, then I, then I help them work through that. But basically, what I do is I'll get a call from an employer that will say, I've heard about this opinion, what does it mean to me? And what I recommend to them is review your policies um, and you know I, I'll take a look at them for them I'll suggest any revisions but really most important to it from an employer perspective is to have the policies in place but also to train their employees that are implementing the FMLA law to train them on what the this recent interpretation means so employers can call you Yes. Can call you at Walter and Haverfield, uh, which and the f telephone number is 216 781 1212, as you see at the bottom of the screen, or you can go to walterhave.com, walterhave.com. That's also at the, at, the, at the bottom of the screen. Yes. It's a lot of paperwork for this. Um, I've got 20 seconds remaining. Mm -hmm. A lot of paperwork for all of these employers to keep up with, but they must keep up with this because this is the law. Absolutely. Absolutely. And, you know, really the, the intent behind an interpretation is to recognize that the traditional idea of a family these mm -hmm. days is, is not what it yeah. used to be. And so when you have an employee that may come to you that doesn't typically fit the traditional mm -hmm. idea of a parent, you have to know that you cannot automatically say, no, you're not eligible because they very, very well may be eligible. Everything has changed. Absolutely. Many thanks. Susan Anderson, an attorney with Walter and Haverfield. You may call Susan at 781-1212 in the 216 area code. Thanks, Thank, Susan. Thank you. Good to have you on the broadcast. We are knowledgeable now about <laughs> FMLA. We're better. I'll take a break in a moment. We'll return. This is Kaleidoscope. We're going to talk about the East End Neighborhood House after this.